Hey, Bunny, guess what? What? No, guess. You actually, actually have to guess. Oh, mucous membrane. Guess membrane. Jeez, you know, it's like you crybaby liberal snowflake cocks. <laughs> Just like you guys to say something like mucous membrane. In fact, it's obvious that the only reason, the only reason you said mucous membrane is because you were paid to say it by George Soros and <laughs> Hillary Clinton and Donnie Most and Black Lives Matter as part of some sort of liberal satanic conspiracy to undermine Donald Trump's administration. <laughs> I bet a member of the secretive deep state that's been hiding in the U.S. government, secretly undermining Trump's every move in an effort to make him look like some sort of idiot. And it's working. Just look at the president. He looks like an idiot. That has to be you and the deep state and George Soros and Barack Obama and Peter Tork and Peter Falk and all the other evil child eating globalist Satanists who meet secretly under pizza parlors and secretly plot the destruction of the human race. God damn you, <laughs> Bud Forth. You and your lies and your mucus membranes. I see through you. I see through your lies. Anyway, it's homework time yet again on the old Pope on Film podcast. <clears throat> People of the internet, your attention, please. Cease your Tide Pod eating and kindly pay attention! Besides, the Tide Pod challenge is so played by now. That's so yesterday. You know, a... a now there's a brand new challenge that's sweeping the internet. It is so new that I just made it up. Uh-huh. What is it? I I call it the EF challenge. The EF challenge. Yes. That EF technical. Well, EF stands for elderly fetish. Oh, okay. This is how it works. You go to a public place like a park or a library. You find the oldest person there. And you whisper in their ear the most graphically disturbing fetish you can think of. Okay. You're at a mall. You see an old woman. You go, oh, ma'am, ma'am, excuse me. Excuse me. Hi, excuse me, ma'am. I'm sorry to bother you, but um, in Japan, women stick live octopi inside of their vagina and ass <laughs> and then masturbate until the orgasm forces the live octopi out of their orifices. <laughs> yeah. That's the EF challenge. It's going to take the internet by storm. E I I'm betting it will. I'm betting it will. Yeah. I wouldn't, mind, I wouldn't mind giving it a whirl myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the first. That was the first fetish I thought of. There's numerous other ways you can go with that. Yeah. Each week, the dreaded Council of Trumps selects a homework assignment and selects 100 Mexican Americans to die via the fiery ritual of carousel. A homework assignment designed to better all of society, but not gingers. <laughs> so this bit is not for you, Carrot Top. You turn off your computer now! <laughs> you weird son of a bitch. Have you seen him within oh, the last five years? I, I've seen him all muscular. Is he still all muscular? Yeah. That was fucking oh, weird. All muscular, and then his face is all like messed up, like he's had like uh, twenty plastic surgeries. It's weird. Yeah. This week, she kind of shows that working out is not for everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you and Joe Piscopo, it's weird. Yeah. And this week, we are learning all about some hardcore gangsta shit. We are yeah. getting our fucking margarine on yes yes we with are. a long form article from the takeout.com entitled the rise and fall of margarine 
I, I did not realize it was such a battle. It was. It was. There's a lot to this. A surprising amount to this. So, a bit of technical stuff first off. The takeout.com is in the same online family as the Onion and their serious pop culture arm, the onionavclub.com, which I have numerous times on the podcast expressed my love and adoration for. Yes. So, so they, it's a number of websites that are all in the same sort of umbrella. So there's uh, the takeout.com, the onion, the onion AV club, splinter news, uh, Jezebel.com, uh, some sort of, sports website called deadspin uh gizmodo i think and the root which is a wonderful website that that deals with black news so so like news but with an african-american i don't know slant beat flavor i guess in fact a few days ago i read an article uh, on tuesday i read an article on the root about a baltimore cop corruption case that was so shocking yes. that it's both it's both appalling and not surprising that this isn't being reported more in the mainstream media yeah i i think i've heard of this <clears throat> yeah um so the I, I, I know th- there's i know there's a widespread investigation of cops somewhere baltimore yeah, so- is as good a place as any yeah the Baltimore Police Department is currently in court over one of the biggest uh, scandals in the history of American law enforcement. Yeah. Uh, it has revealed how one of America's largest cities happens to be filled with crooked cops, but no one seems to be talking about it outside of Baltimore. Mm-hmm. So it started when a 19-year-old woman from New Jersey overdosed in 2011 and authorities in Baltimore began tracing the origins of the drug. It led them to a big drug crew and the fact that one of their own Baltimore police officers was involved with this giant Baltimore drug crew. So they investigated and investigated, and by the time they were finished investigating, eight members of their own uh, uh, task force had been charged with crimes ranging from racketeering to robbery. Yeah. So there's all of these crazy stories about how these cops would literally just arrest these guys for drugs. But before they would arrest them for drugs, they would take any money that they had on them. And then they would they would at gunpoint take the drug dealer to their home, enter the home without a warrant and take whatever other money they had at the house. Oh, oh. The couple I heard was um, they carry toy guns in the car with toy guns in case toy they guns. in case they accidentally shoot shoot a child, mm-hmm. uh, and yep. that they will they will drive into an area uh, like a park or something like that. They will come screeching in and stop suddenly, and whoever runs they'll chase. And arrest. Yeah. yeah. They they figured out the, the toy gun thing because they were like uh they were like, hey, wait a second. Why does this one police officer have a shit ton of toy guns in his car? <laughs> it's, a, it's amazing. They also believed that all young men with backpacks had to be dope peddlers. Ah, okay. Yeah. So that's that's obviously true and then like one of the officers who wasn't part of the corruption case one of the officers was scheduled to offer evidence against the crooked cops and but he was mysteriously shot in the head with his own weapon the day he before he <laughs> yeah that's a, oh how how what a crazy random happenstance yeah that's that is exactly the story i've been hearing yes yeah Absolutely insane. So anyway, all of these websites are now owned by the same corporation. And apparently 
this corporation believes that the way for these websites to stay relevant is to fill them with sponsored fucking articles. Oh, I hate that. So now I'm like, oh, the root.com. I want to learn about, uh, you know, what's plaguing African Americans right now. And oh, look at this article about Baltimore cop corruption. And oh, look at this teacher in Alabama who's racist. And oh, look. There's a sale on Game of Thrones box sets on Amazon. <laughs> oh, hey. Oh, this is a really interesting uh, article about gerrymandering. Oh, wow. Now is apparently the time to buy Bluetooth speakers. <laughs> and it's annoying as shit, especially since I've just loved the Onion AV Club for so long. Yeah. And, and now it's difficult to weed through because there's all these horrible stupid articles and also now they've changed it so that back in the day every website looked different but now every website that is owned by this corporation they all look exactly the same they have yeah. the same layout they use the same uh uh software to uh to create the website so now you know the graphic is different but uh, the root looks exactly the same as the onion AV club looks exactly the same as the takeout. So it's really annoying. Yeah. But one thing that I like is that they're now regularly linking to each other. And I, I, I when I, before, when I was on the onion AV club, I'd get the onion AV club yeah. and now I'll be on the onion AV club and I'll really be reading some article. It's like, Oh, here's a good link to a Jezebel article about sexual harassment, or here's a lengthy takeout article about the history of Christmas. And so that's how I found this article on margarine. <laughs> I, I had already read a, I had already read a really lengthy article about Thanksgiving, and Thanksgiving was just this this one holiday where everything was, you know, we're good and we spent some time together, and then suddenly it was, it was all of these like a uh, like news article people, you know, that would be like, it's 1930, and if you don't have a huge Thanksgiving, then you're a piece of shit. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Here's what everyone needs to do to have the greatest Thanksgiving ever, guys. And before it was just a time to kind of get together and hang out. And now suddenly it's like, oh, you're no one unless you have this massive bird. Really? Is that is that part of the yeah. secret origins? Yeah. Yeah, it was it was it was a takeout article just like this one on margarine. So I, when I saw the history of margarine, I'm like, okay, well, I really liked that article about Thanksgiving, so I'll give, I'll give the margin article a try. And first off, <laughs> I, I love the idea of margarine being the victim of a smear campaign <laughs> yes. by Big Butter. By... <laughs> like Big Tobacco, but with more fats. Yeah, yeah. I, I... love that idea. I kind of like the the idea a lot of bogus butter. Yeah, yeah, bogus butter. This is bogus S butter. Sixty million dollars? No, sixty million pounds of bogus butter were sold. <laughs> yeah. I just love the idea of like here's just butter, and I never thought of butter, and you know I never really thought about butter or margarine or anything like that. Yeah, and then. I look into it and I'm like, oh my God, here's this massive war I've never known about. <laughs> Just this massive, lengthy, decades long, epic war that no one gives two fucks about. <laughs> and I find that absolutely fascinating. Like, if I looked, what other things would I find? Like, oh, almond milk is being terrorized by. Big cow. <laughs> bananas. You, know? you, you kind of want to look for bananas. You want to look up bananas. Bananas are kind of interesting. Yeah. Okay. In, whoa, Natasha's coming in hot. Everybody is coming in here hot. But, okay. Jesus. So if, you have who are about to kill me. if I have witches who are about to kill me, uh, okay, I have some exes that are already there. Oh, actual witches. Okay. Won't kill them. And a regular gun and a regular bullet won't kill them. They get cocky 
lucky enough to say, oh, God, scary. But you have bullets that are specifically designed to kill witches in the chamber. Do you say witch killing bullets and allow them a chance to attack you? Or do you just fucking shoot them and realize, oh, fuck. I, I, I'm just going to shoot them. I'm, I'm just, Thank you. I'm going to pass. Fucking Dean Winchester. Witch killing bullets. <laughs> Bitch, tell them. Then you get thrown up against walls. He loves his walls. <laughs> I'm not I sure what to- exactly that was. <laughs> I would like to take this time to say, first off, you can tell that it's a new episode of Supernatural. Yeah. Secondly, there was a period of about a month where I would get Natasha really upset because I decided that I was going to watch Lucha Underground with the same intensity that she watched Supernatural. Yeah. So I would be like sitting there on the couch, just like yelling off of the top of my lungs. No, don't pile drive him. Ah! <laughs> and she's just in like, she's just like four rooms away going, I fucking hate you, Steve. <laughs> no, don't tag Prince Puma. What the fuck? <laughs> and like, I burst into the bedroom. Okay. So Marty, the moth Martinez. And she's like, no, no, just fucking get out of here. I hate you. <laughs> if anything, I'm jealous because I I wish I had something I was that passionate about, you yeah. know? Yeah. God, I got nothing. <laughs> so, so butter, so big butter. Big butter. Is demonizing margarine. And they go to the government and they get the government. To pass all these laws against margarine because, well, yeah. I, heard, I heard that margarine is made with cats and dog fur and old boots, not like pure farm made butter. <laughs> so people are shitting on margarine. And then in places, they forced it to be dyed pink. Yes. New Hampshire. Yeah. That's the power of big butter right there. That is. So margarine stayed shat upon until World War II when people had to like ration shit and margarine was cheap. And then basically it's the same thing with the Great Depression. Uh-huh. Like, oh man, it's the Great Depression. We're all poor. Now we can't afford butter. Gee, if only there was some sort of cheap butter yeah. that was out there. Maybe some sort of butter substitute that I can't believe it's not. <laughs> but but in eventually butter won out and stayed champ until the 80s when suddenly everyone pretended to be fucking healthy. Yes. For like an entire decade, people were just like, oh, I'm 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 jogging. Or yogging. I'm not sure of the pronunciation. <laughs> Apparently you just run. Yeah. So so that's first off. So that's first off. Secondly. Fuck Fabio. Fuck Fabio. I, I think that is a, a fair thing to say. Yes. Fuck Fabio. This technically beautiful model from Parts Unknown. <laughs> Wherever he's from, I'm pretty sure that's the same mysterious Parts Unknown that Tommy Wiseau is from. I I I, I would go with that, yeah. Like, totally. like I would like to see Tommy Wiseau... Fabio and Arnold Schwarzenegger in a room together. Yeah. Tommy, I'm such a big fan of your films. I am such a big fan too. Oh, well, thank you. And now it's <laughs> French, but like I lost it like halfway through that story. But you hear where I'm getting. Yes. True story. True story. His his weird uh, accent. Fabio's accent was so thick and complicated that he could barely say in one breath, I can't believe it's not butter. (laughs) But that's not the kicker. He could barely say it, but he did say it. It like hurt him, but he said it. Kind of like Gal Gadot saying the name Sam Smith on SNL. (laughs) Sam Smith! So, so... Fabio could just barely say, I can't believe it's not butter. Oh, that was exhausting to say. See, I that must have been somewhere where I gave up television because I, I I do not recall any Fabio margarine commercials. Oh, yeah. No, I remember. 
Yeah. It, 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 but then I know it's out. not nice to fool Mother Nature. Yeah, yeah. But then they came out with "I can't believe it's not butter spray." <laughs> now, if you ever feel bad about yourself, here's a pick me up. If you ever feel sad or feel put down or just you're having a crummy day then just say out loud i can't believe it's not butter spray say that in one breath and then you go oh hey look at that i can do something that america's most beautiful man can't (laughs) sure he might be america's most beautiful man but at least i can say this without getting winded (laughs) <laughs> because literally they said okay fabio the, the all of your i can't believe it's not butter commercials are huge this is basically like where's the beef this is huge so now we're excited to do these i can't believe it's not butter spray commercials so hold up the spray bottle and say i can't believe it's not butter spray and literally he would be there going i can't believe it's not butter spray. <laughs> I can't do it, guys. It's too hard. <laughs> I am too pretty to say it. So they literally, he literally. You, you make would, it sound like he's from Louisiana. Yeah, he was physically incapable of saying it with one breath. So they would have him say, I can't believe it's not butter. Then they would cut. Then they would do a close up on him. And then he would say, Spray. <laughs> Because he literally couldn't say it all. Wow. And I love that so much. I've got that. That's the one thing I have on Fabio. Yeah. That and I, I, I'm, I'm probably a better speller. (laughs) Just in general. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that for a fact, but I'm, I'm kind of guessing and I'm pretty sure I'm right. (laughs) So. Last week, we spent a little bit of time shitting on Fabio, and we talked about the roller coaster incident. And, Bunny, you mentioned that it was the closest that mankind has ever gotten to a literal act of God. Yes. And I love that. (laughs) I thought of that a lot. I spent a lot of time looking up the roller coaster incident. So, if you're listening and you're a younger person, well, then, fuck you. (laughs) <laughs> just fuck you i'm sorry I, I it's hitting me that i'm 40 years old i'm going through some things anyway fuck you yes i agree you can kiss my ass also 1999 march 30th 1999 bush gardens in williamsburg virginia it's they are opening a brand new roller coaster called apollo's chariot and a number of a number of people, dignitaries and famous people or what, or whatever, are there to ride the first ride of this new roller coaster, Apollo's Chariot. And as it turns out, Fabio was riding as well. And it's important to say he was in the front. Yes, he was. He was in the front of of the cart. So the first drop. This is like a math question. This is like one of those things you would get in like a college test. <laughs> okay. First drop is 210 feet down. And then the roller coaster in that first drop reached speeds of upwards to 73 miles an hour. Okay. So imagine it's right here on the first drop. You are going 73 miles an hour down a 210 feet incline that America's most beautiful man had his face collide with the beak of a fucking goose <laughs> on a roller coaster yeah and it, it panicked the people at at bush gardens and they said are are you going to close this and and they said no we're not going to close the ride and the ride opened as scheduled and the the owners of bush gardens literally said As far as we can tell, this is just a freak occurrence that only happened once and will never happen again. Because and 
the amazing thing is, is not only is this literally a random freak occurrence that has really only happened once and has never happened again, but it also happened to America's most beautiful man. <laughs> If anything, I just hope that Fabio, on his way to the emergency room, stopped at like a Circle K or a 7-Eleven and bought some scratch-off tickets. Yeah. I mean, in part, I had actually felt very bad for Fabio and didn't like that people were like laughing over this because that had to hurt like a motherfucker. Oh, you know, they, yeah. You get you it was, got hit in the face with a goose. It was like a... It was like a, a roller coaster. Going at 75 miles an hour. It was on the bridge of his nose, and the beak went in, left a gash one inch deep. Oh, man. And just imagine one inch into your nose. Yeah. That's got to hurt like a son of a bitch. Yeah. And, and, they it's not so- like, and it's not like he was doing anything stupid where it's like, you know, he wasn't putting bottle rockets up his ass where if you get hurt, yeah, I'm laughing at you because you're a fucking moron. The guy was just on, an, on a roller coaster. How innocent is that? How, how completely American is that? Yeah. And then just then just like the weirdness of I am America's. Uh, most beautiful man, and I'm getting paid to ride this roller coaster. I am waving at the cameras. So many cameras here to see me, the most beautiful man, and I am waving, and I'm going to ride this roller coaster, and yes, they're taking pictures of me and my beautiful looks, because that's all I have. My most beautiful, my beautiful looks. And then three minutes later, the roller coaster comes back, and he's covered in blood. <laughs> And he's he's got to feel horrible and embarrassed. And then, of course, not only does he feel horrible and embarrassed, and there's a one inch gash that was left by a goose inside of his face. But of course, who's there waiting for him when he comes back? But all of the fucking press that he was just <laughs> waving at. Hello, yes, I'm Fabio, the most beautiful man. Take my picture. Yes, okay. Now, what is he like? Nothing to see here. <laughs> And so they weren't sure what happened, and Fabio just had to be rushed to the to the to the emergency room. So it's like, oh, what happened? Was it a bird? Oh, I don't know. And so they they scoured the area, and sure enough, they just see the dead goose floating <laughs> in in the pond under the roller coaster. I'm like, ah, I think we found our Fabio goose. But they put in handcuffs just to be on the safe side. The safe side. They did shoot it 23 times. <laughs> yes. So, so yeah, yeah. His his face collided with a goose. Yes. He just, uh, uh, yeah. The most beautiful man had his uh, face disfigured by a goose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's part of it, too. It's like... Uh, Again, I feel sorry for him. I feel bad that had to have hurt and all of that. But, you know, still, could you pick a better person to get hit in the face with a goose? Oh, yeah. 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 Here's the amazing thing. Here's the amazing thing. Here's the amazing thing. And I'm pretty sure that this is true. I'm pretty sure that this is true. Just one goose, probably the nicest goose in the world, like the Gandhi of geese. Yeah. It's just it's just flying around. But like, oh man, I I just love being like I'm the the goose <laughs> Jesus, you know, yeah. just flying around. Then suddenly here comes this weird faced human and kills the Gandhi of geese. And so then after that, that basically started uh, the goose ISIS. Yeah, you know, kind of like how George Bush created ISIS. So Fabio's nose. <laughs> created this evil terrorist goose organization who vowed revenge against the humans for what they did to their goose Jesus and they're like oh so like five years later eight years later okay finally after so many years of planning we have we have come up with our ultimate plan an act of sheer terrorism yes goose brothers and sisters <laughs> we will Take down this plane being flown by this Sully character. <laughs> so that was the miracle on the Hudson. Yes. 
that was geese trying to get their revenge. I, but it I, didn't. But Sully was amazing, and he landed it in the middle of the Hudson River. So now, what are the geese going to do next? I don't know. And none of the politicians are talking about this. No, I I, I more picture a, a colony of geese that are really afraid of the roller coaster, but they live by the roller coaster. But their dream is to move. And one brave geese, one brave goose tries to solve the problem by showing everybody that there's absolutely nothing to be afraid of at the roller coaster. <laughs> so he goes flying around, he's zigging and zagging around the roller coaster. And he's hit in the face with a human. <laughs> just imagine it from the geese's <laughs> point of view, too. Like you're just flying in the air, and then suddenly you just turn. And you see this giant human's face coming directly at you. <laughs> Just imagine that the last thing you see before you die is Fabio's face <laughs> colliding with you. <laughs> like, oh, God damn. Yeah. Like, Fabio's face killed an animal. <laughs> yes. It's fascinating to me. <laughs> oh. Like I want to do, I want to do like an animation of that geese, and he's having a, just a beautiful day, and then suddenly the last thing he sees is just Fabio's giant face <laughs> coming at him, and that's the last thing you see is just that's the geese, that's the goose that was killed by Fabio. Oh man, that is that is frightening. So at the height of margarine's popularity, according to this article, America's annual consumption of margarine was 12 pounds per person. Yeah. That's a crap Sounds ton like of luck. country cock. But recently people have, uh, uh, have slowly realized, oh shit, butter isn't that bad. Then, of course, there's the queen of white privilege, Paula Dean, who just frickin' sweats butter. <laughs> yes. And then in 2015, uh, McDonald's finally stopped using margarine. Oh. They had been using margarine since, like, the 80s. And then in 2015, they're like, okay, we're going to switch to butter. Uh, so they use butter on the grill and then in whatever their biscuits or whatever the hell. But, but yeah. So butter is back, and I can't believe it's not butter and country crock are, are disappearing. But the bottom line is, you may think, oh, a, a lengthy article looking at the history of margarine. Gee, that's really going to suck. Yeah. But hey, it's a pretty good article, and the mere it fact is. that, you, and the mere fact that you just blindly assumed that it was going to suck. Wow, you're a bitch. <laughs> And I'm sorry that I keep attacking the audience. <laughs> but it's not my fault for attacking the audience. It's more of the audience's fault for being so attackable. Yes. Just to be clear, there are they're, they're, they're bad people on both sides. <laughs> on both sides of the podcast. And that is it for homework this week. And we here at the Pope on Film humbly and sincerely so sin humbsierly yeah we honestly hope that your hearts minds and pores have all been suitably opened ah but don't think you're getting out of here that easily buck chacho oh that would be a combination <laughs> of bucko and muchacho yeah. the difficult part is the the second o oh, so buck chacho Hyphen O. Yes. Buck Cha Cha O. <laughs> Don't forget next week's homework. And for next week, we will be heading to the 1970s with an actual full length episode. Okay. Of the long forgotten, excruciatingly horrible, uh, originally adult, but then children's aimed variety show yes. the hudson brothers razzle dazzle show i i also hope that we will be covering the movie that they they were in oh god they Basically were in a movie started in and it was pretty okay 
well, this show is not pretty okay. It was kind of a comedy horror sort of thing. There were zombies, and all they could say is, what difference does it make? Oh, well, I'll have to look that up and see. Because I, had... really, I, really, I was really happy to find a full-length episode of the Hudson Brothers Razzle Dazzle show. Yeah. So there's a lot here. The 1970s, a long-forgotten brother band, America's former love of variety shows, mm-hmm. and, the, and the fact that for the last 20 years, people have still kept trying in vain to bring that shit back. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, Neil Patrick Harris, but you're going to fail. He was trying to bring back a variety show? Yeah, he had a, it was like the Neil Patrick Harris show, and it was on for like a season, and it was him doing songs, and him doing skits, and special guests, and celebrities, and it's like, Jesus Christ, this isn't that weird Brady Bunch show. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not Sonny and Cher. In fact, you're better than Sonny and Cher. We just don't want that anymore. It's it's not that time. Stop trying to bring this back. Mm Mm-hmm. And of course, my favorite. Because everybody got tossed the fucking variety show. Oh, everybody. Oh yeah, like, I remember. Who the hell even heard of the Hudson Brothers before their fucking variety show? Yeah, Pink Lady and Jeff. Yeah, I remember that. I remember Pink Lady and Jeff, and then. <laughs> There's uh, my favorite part of the Hudson Brothers Razzle Dazzle show. The Bear. The Bear. The Bear. (laughs) Both credits to the Hudson Brothers Razzle Dazzle show could not be more 70s. I think I have to agree, yeah. It is physically impossible for anything to be more 70s than the opening of the Hudson Brothers Razzle Dazzle show. It is perfect. They, they are wearing bell bottoms, if I am not mistaken. Oh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It's perfect. Everything else is horrible, but the opening is perfect. <laughs> so that's next week. Very excited about that. So join us next week for more homework with the Pope on Film Podcast. And cut on that. Yes.